Welcome to our Cleviscope tour. Our CS328A XS is a PC mixed signal oscilloscope. It has an analog bandwidth of 100 MHz, a deep 8 mega samples of storage, two high resolution 14 bit analog channels, and eight digital channels for mixed signal capture. You can trigger on a combination of analog and digital inputs. To top it off, we include a 0-10 MHz signal generator for stimulus. In this tour, we'll be discovering what our Cleviscope application can do for you. Welcome! Hi, let's begin. We're using the scope display to capture two signals. The channel A axis on the left defines the amplitude range captured, in this case from minus 0.5 volts to plus 10.5 volts. The analog to digital converter always converts just this amplitude range, even when offset from zero. The time axis has zero as the trigger point, and finds the capture period. Anything before the trigger point is pre-trigger. We have the Cleviscope control panel. Use it to control capture. We can turn channels on, choose coupling, apply filters, and choose the correct probe multiplier. Next, we see the current capture duration is 44 milliseconds. It's often good to capture the big picture and use the deep memory to zoom as needed. Our resolution is 20 nanoseconds. We're displaying 7,026 samples decimated from the fully captured frame. To move all the samples into the PC, click Get Frame. We can choose averaging on or off, and we can set up our trigger. Currently, we're triggering on channel A, rising through 1 volt. We aren't using the mixed signal trigger. Right, once we've captured something, we can stop and then zoom. Let's manually zoom on this pulse group here. We'll use the zoom controls on the time axis. As you can see, we can also move the graph around by dragging it. We can use the left and right pan buttons for fine control. I often use the keyboard controls because they are fast and zoom on the tracer point, which is the black blob displaying the current position. We can quickly zoom in and out. You can also use the mouse wheel as a virtual knob to do the same thing. After you've zoomed, you can use the markers to measure waveform features. Here, for example, we measure the rise time. Up here we have marker information. We have the tracer and two markers. We can also see the differences between the markers. After zooming is needed, we can see the whole waveform by clicking on Fit. So, with the flavour of how to navigate, let's look at triggering. Cliviscope uses two triggers to find events. You can trigger on all manner of events based on the time between triggers or account of the trigger events. Trigger 1 is defined on the control panel. Trigger 2 is defined by the Trigger 2 display. Let's do a quick run through some of the events we can trigger on. We've got a jittery signal, which are some defects we'll be looking for. Just while we're looking at this, how would we quantify the jitter? Well, the simplest way is persistence. Turn it on up here. Now the graph is showing the jitter in the signal. If we stop, we can use the markers to measure the jitter. Double click to place a marker. 90 microseconds of jitter. Let's turn off the persistence and get on. First up, we want to trigger on slew rate. Say our design goal was a FET gate drive system, which had a slew rate of between 10 and 15 nanoseconds. Anything less than 10 nanoseconds and the Muller effect means the gate is starved of charge. Anything greater than 15 nanoseconds, and we have excessive transition loss. We set both triggers rising on channel A. Trigger 1 at 400 millivolts, and trigger 2 at 4 volts. Finally, we want a duration from trigger 1 to trigger 2 of between 10 nanoseconds and 15 nanoseconds. We set trigger usage to min less than trigger 1 to 2, less than max. It's triggering! What about if we wanted to find edges that did not meet the spec? Simple. 
choose the trigger usage of trig 1 to 2 greater than max. Now we are finding failing edges. Notice that the other channel is showing runt pulses. Let's zoom in and look at the edge. We can see that it is not a single slew and it takes longer than 50 nanoseconds. This could be a FET gate drive running out of charge. Imagine finding this in your power supply system. Useful, eh? Let's zoom back out. Let's trigger on the runt pulse. It's simply a matter of setting the trigger channel to B. Trigger 1 is met, but trigger 2 never happens, so we find the runt. One final look. In this example, we're triggering on a 2.5 millisecond wide pulse on channel A. We're using both triggers again, with channel A triggering rising through 2 volts. We're using the range of times between 2.3 and 2.6 milliseconds. Trigger 2 is set up to be trigger 1 inverted. In other words, through channel A, 2 volts, but with a falling edge instead. We've got the tracking display on, and it's tracking the tracer position on the scope display. If I move the tracer, the tracking display follows it. I can go down to the tracking display and widen it up, and we can independently move it around. Here are some pulses. Let's zoom in. We can use the signal information display to calculate common values. For these pulses, the frequency of channel A is 500 kHz. We can explore other parts of the waveform by moving the tracer on the scope display. For example, this pulse group here is 750 kHz. And this pulse group is 500 kHz. The scope graph, tracker graph approach gives lots of flexibility for navigating a waveform and measuring parts of it. We are sure you'll find this very useful. We've been triggering on the time period between triggers. You can trigger on the period being less than a value, in a range, or more than a value. You can also count triggers. Finally, we can also trigger on a period and then count a trigger. Let's do that. We've been triggering on the 2.5 millisecond wide pulse. There are a bunch of pulses off to the right. Say we wanted to trigger on the third pulse in. How do we do it? Easy. Set the trigger count to 3, then set the trigger usage to inner range, followed by count trigger 2. We click on the 0 button to bring the trigger position into view. Now you can see we are triggering on the pulse burst. We zoom in, and you can see we are triggering on the third falling edge in the burst. We make the count 4. And now it's the fourth pulse. This approach is very useful for triggering on a particular byte in a serial data stream, or finding the 60th pulse after the index pulse out of an encoder, or finding a particular video line. We're sure you'll find our triggering system simple to use and very powerful. Now we'll look at the charting feature in Cleviscope. You can capture all the channels simultaneously at up to 1.5 mega samples per second until the hard disk is full. We've been going now for 249 seconds, and we have another 13 hours to go. That's 70 gigasamples. Every time I push a button, I make a set of pulses. We can pause and resume the chart by clicking the chart scroll button. The chart is now paused, and we can explore it. Capture continues in the background. If we click the chart scroll button again, Charting resumes. If we want to explore the chart, we click the chart scroll button to pause the chart, and then zoom as normal. Here you can see that each button press is in fact a bunch of pulses. We can see each individual pulse if we zoom further. We have approximately 670 nanoseconds resolution, good enough to see the step nature of the pulse. We also see that the A channel is a frequency swept signal. It's been sweeping between 100 Hz and 100 kHz. 
We resume by clicking the chart scroll button. You can use other displays to see other views of the chart as capture continues. For example, here we see the tracking graph with a much closer view. We can pause and use the tracking graph even while the scope graph continues. Charting is a very useful function to find intermittent or sporadic events. You can capture high speed events over hours and days and then drill down to see what happened. Once you know the shape of problem signals, you can trigger on them individually and use the automated file save feature to leave a time stamped history of events on disk. No other system we know of is this powerful. People often ask us about the noise and spectral performance of Cleviscope. Here we have an example of a low amplitude 20 millivolts peak to peak sine wave, which we can frequency sweep. The signal information display shows the signal statistics. For example, the signal is 6.9 millivolts RMS. The noise floor is somewhat less than minus 120 dBV. The signal we are looking at is actually quite small at about minus 68 dBV. We can improve the noise floor in a number of ways. First we can open acquisition settings and turn on the moving average filter. As this is a low frequency signal, a time constant of 1.28 microseconds is suitable. As you can see, the signal is now quite a lot smoother and the noise floor has dropped a few dB. A further way to improve the noise is to use averaging. You can use averaging either in the time domain using triggered capture or in the frequency domain using auto capture. Time averaging gives the greatest noise reduction for a reliably triggered signal. We use the settings averaging menu. We see exponential weighting, which is good, and 10 averages, also good. To start averaging, we just click averaging on. The noise floor sinks to less than minus 135 dBV. So, with a 7 millivolt signal, we still have 70 dB of dynamic range. Amazing! This is way better than what you can do with an 8-bit scope. Next stop is protocol decoding. The setup is this. An SPI controlled signal generator outputs a swept frequency updated by SPI messages. At the same time, the current frequency is output via a UART. We use the protocol decoder to decode them. The decoder can output time-aligned messages on the digital graph. We can handle hundreds of messages. Let's use the tracking graph for a closer view. We have zoomed on the 4000 Hz message. We'll zoom a bit further and look at each byte. You can see that each decoded byte is placed in its correct position. Using the optional text output, you can see the start time with 10 nanoseconds precision. Protocol decoding is a very powerful tool when working with messaging and processor and mixed signal applications. Cleviscope can do this very well. After a fair bit of effort, we get our system working and use Cleviscope to capture the evidence. Now is the time to document. The easiest way is to copy and paste. Select the graph to copy and do Control C. Go to the target document and do Control V. The display is now in the document, ready for you to write about. Later on, you might even find that aha moment in the document. Of course, you can also save the data to disk. These are very powerful tools. Cleviscope includes a live MATLAB interface via maths. We do this using four gateway M functions entered into the maths equation builder. Here we are calling one of these functions. You can see the four of them labeled CS1 to 4. Each gateway function operates using a MATLAB M file, which is just text that is run by MATLAB. In this case, we're using cscope4.m. The function does whatever you want it to do. In this example, the function opens a figure, calls the spectrogram procedure, and titles the graph. 
Here is the resulting spectrogram. Let's make it work. As you can see, it's real time. Now I'll start a single capture and then run a chirp. It's captured. It's gone from about a kilohertz to 50 kilohertz. You can see the spectrogram has displayed the results properly. The chirp took about 8 milliseconds. Not only is this easy to use, it's also seriously powerful. Cleverscope also includes a live Excel link via logging. You can log maths generated values such as power and energy, or decisions such as a value out of range. Here we have a sweeping signal generator and we want to log the frequency of the signal generator to an Excel spreadsheet. Click Show Logging and then select Frequency and Pulse Length. Choose the channels to log and the type of file to log to. We choose Excel. Type in the file name. Click Start Logging and Excel opens and values start logging into it. Click Stop Logging. We highlight the time and frequency columns in Excel. Now we insert a chart. You can see that the chart faithfully follows the frequency sweep. Once you have the data in Excel, you can process it as required. Pretty cool, eh? It's taken 16 minutes and we've barely scratched the surface. The Cleverscope application is a toolkit that we know will save you time and effort. We've covered these topics, but we haven't talked about custom units, automatic save and load from disk, XY graphing, or swept frequency or DC stimulation. Our coverage of the spectrum analyzer has been cursory, and we didn't go into maths. But you can bet that as you dig deeper, you will find more that you can do with this amazing tool. Check out our testimonials and you'll see that other people think the same way. We would like you to buy a Cleverscope, no doubt about it. It's our baby. If you do buy one, we'll answer your questions and provide you with timely upgrades. You'll get a three-year guarantee for peace of mind. We'd love to welcome you as a new Cleverscoper.